Hey everybody, welcome to I Speak Organized. Today's video is for those of you who are thinking about starting your pro organizing business or maybe you've already started the process of forming your professional organizing business. And I wanna walk you through the essential forms that you need to start taking paying clients, to get ready for your first session, do all the consulting ahead of time and just be totally prepped feel professional and ready to rock when it comes time to organize for your clients. So I'm gonna take you through that. This is something that a lot of people have asked me about and have asked me to do a video on. I'm finally getting around to it. And I'm even gonna take you through the process of setting up a free Canva account and how you can customize some forms from the templates they've provided. And so I'll walk you through that as well. If you're into it, stick around and let's go. My name is Melanie and I'm your professional organizer and productivity consultant. What does that even mean? All right, everybody, welcome back. If you're new to my channel, then allow me to formally introduce myself and welcome you into the speaker fam. My name is Melanie Summers, and I'm your professional organizer, decluttering expert, and productivity-based life coach. I like to speak organized to give you the tools to conquer your clutter, live life with more purpose, and learn all about the business of tidying. I am very passionate about the mission of spreading the word about organizing and decluttering, as well as how to run a pro-organizing business. And so I am putting out new content every single single week to help you wherever you happen to be on your journey with organizing. So be sure to smash the like button if you get value out of this video and consider becoming a subscriber to my channel. All you have to do is hit the little circle icon of my face at the end of the video or you can tap the subscribe button down in the corner and that will make you an official member. So this is something that I get asked about frequently when I'm on my pro consult calls and so I figured it was time to make a quick crash course video to help you out because I'm sure there are tons of people out here that want to feel prepared. They want to know the right questions to ask. They want to know the right information to gather and have resources to hand their new clients so that they feel professional. And so you feel confident and prepared moving into a session with a new client. So I want to make sure that I help you get your bases covered in this video. And I want to be real with you because I have been where you are right now and I know that it is a struggle when you're first starting out sometimes because there's just so many things that you have to keep track of. There are so many forms that you have to fill out and you have to make this and that official. And it's, it's just a lot to handle for one person. And it takes a long time to set up and establish your business the right way. And so I wanna offer you a shortcut. If you know that you're just not the type of person that is good at this, or you don't wanna focus on it, you don't wanna waste the time, and you just wanna focus on the organizing part of your business and helping your clients and getting into a client session faster, there's a link down in the description area where you can learn about my pro organizer forms pack. I offer nine custom forms that are done for you. All you have to do is plug them into a free Canva account and you can start playing around with colors. You can design your logo if you haven't done that. You can plug it into the form. You can move things around, change the text. They are 100% customizable. But the cool thing about them is that they are specifically for professional organizers and you have your client agreement. I've got a card authorization form so you can take credit card payments electronically. I've got the client intake questions so that you don't forget what to ask and what information to collect. Just tons of stuff that I have developed over the years of running my business that helped me with that process from start to finish as well as provide resources to my clients. If that's something that interests you, you're gonna get a special discount link as well. So when you click on the link in there, bring the discount code YTPRO8 for $8 off the purchase. You'll be good to go. It's a shortcut. It's really just an opportunity for you if you want it to be able to take paying clients that much faster. You're going to want to stick around until the end of the video because I have two very special offers for you. So let's go ahead and dive in 
to the five essential forms that you need to start taking paying clients and feel professional and prepared for your first session. Okay, so if you're gonna be designing your forms from scratch, the first one is gonna be your client intake form. And this could also be referred to as the consultation form. This isn't something that you need to have a client fill out. This is more actually just a reference for you to have on your computer or on a piece of paper where you can make sure that you are gathering the correct information to have a client's file set up. So this is gonna be their name, their address, the project type. So is it gonna be an office? Are you working on productivity? Are you doing their photos? Are we doing a moving project? So you just kind of get an idea of the types of supplies that you're gonna need on the job. And then you're gonna maybe wanna collect some information about their occupation if you're helping them with an office decluttering or organizing system setup, whatever that happens to be. I work with all kinds of different clients, doctors, lawyers, nurses, um, and uh, engineers, people that work from home or people that have offices outside the home, but they all have very specific needs for how things need to be organized. And so it's a good idea to get that information as well. Um, it's also important to figure out whether or not they have partners or children. And if you're gonna be working on those types of organizing projects, and you also wanna make sure during the consultation when you collect that information, that you know that everybody in the house is on board. I don't ever take on projects on behalf of someone else. Getting your space organized is a very personal endeavor. And if the person that you're organizing for isn't on board, they don't know that you're coming in and touching their stuff, it can be bad news. So just make sure that whoever you're speaking to, they are the ones that are on board with the whole process and just you know get that confirmation from them. Um, it's also a good idea to figure out if they have pets, you know, if you're allergic to cats or something like that. It's, it's something that you might need to be aware of to determine what you're comfortable with in the environment and working and all of that and so forth. And then just kind of get an idea of what their budget is and see if your services fit into their budget. You're gonna have to come up with your pricing structure and figure out how you can help them maximize their budget. Good to get all that information. And then of course, just like the scheduling, when the best time of day is for them. Maybe they can only do decluttering and organizing sessions with you on the weekends. Maybe they have a more flexible schedule. And then I also like to get information on how they found out about me so that I can can sort of steer my marketing efforts towards a channel that is working well for me. And then I also just have a section for additional notes because I like to ask a lot of questions during the consultation and make sure that I am gathering all the details that's going to make the process feel very personal. Next thing that you're gonna wanna have is the follow-up email template. And I refer to this as a template because I feel that it's something that you can just have a broad outline of and then just customize for each client so that you're not having to write a brand new follow-up from scratch every single time. That's a big time suck and so I like to develop these as templates as much as possible so that I can get to the client as quickly as possible while they're still feeling really excited and motivated and that they also feel valued because you're following up with them quickly. So the follow-up email is going to basically be a summary of everything that you discussed over the phone with them on your consult. You will have discussed a ton of information. You will have taken a bunch of notes. You will have given them your pricing structure and it's a lot of information to absorb for both parties. And so it's just a good idea to have a little follow-up email so that they have reference points for you. Make sure that they understand and are very clear with your policies and things like that. So it's just a way for you to essentially summarize what you talked about and what the next steps are for them. So maybe they're gonna choose a package and maybe they needed a moment to consult with family members to determine the start date for a project and so you can help them nail down in writing in an email what the start date is and so on and so forth. And then of course, just like another opportunity for you to reach out and thank them for their time and all of that 
um, it's just a really, really good way to keep them engaged. This next one is a big one, and this is your client agreement. This is the contract between your business and your client. And I have to say this for legal reasons, just to make it perfectly clear that I am a business owner, I am not a legal professional, and so this is for information purposes only, and you are responsible for doing your own research and making sure to run your client agreement by a lawyer in the place where you live to make sure that you are compliant with everything that needs to be complied with. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, I'll kind of give you the basics of things that are good to include on your client agreement. So uh, in addition to all of the contact information that you gathered, you also wanna make sure that you have their quoted time and quoted fee. Once they've chosen what service they wanna do, if they're buying a package from you or whatever, have that in writing and make sure that you spell out the quoted fee and quoted time. And it's okay if those things change along the way, you know, processes don't quite go as, as you planned, maybe you need more time, maybe you need less. And so just make sure that you put in there that the quoted fee and the quoted time is approximate and may not be what is reflected at the end. So after that, um, it's also a good idea to have a media release because we as professional organizers sort of rely on before and after photos, especially for social media. That's a really big deal. It's content marketing for us. And so you wanna have some sort of media release in there to get permission to use their before and after photos and then get consent um, for what you can and can't use. And then from there, you want to maybe put some exclusions in your contract, certain things that you won't do, they're outside your scope of work. Um, there are some people that are fine offering cleaning and organizing services, and then there are others who are very adamant that the organizing and the cleaning are completely separate. And so you just wanna make sure that whatever it is, however your business is structured, you're very clear about the services that you provide and the services that you don't provide. Probably the most important part of your client agreement is gonna be your cancellation and refund policy. And this needs to be crystal clear for your clients to avoid any sort of mishaps or misunderstandings. And so you can decide whatever it is that you want your cancellation policy to be. If it's 24 hours, if it's 48 hours, are you going to be charging them for half? Are you gonna be charging them a full session? How do you handle uh, rescheduling? Cause that, that type of stuff is gonna happen pretty often. And so you just want to set your expectations ahead of time and make sure that they're clear clearly communicated. I have it all spelled out in my client agreement. I make sure that they initial next to that specific section in the agreement. I also make sure that I verbalize it during the consultation and I add that information into the follow-up email that we just talked about so that it has been communicated three times in different formats. So if you know they hear it, they're seeing it, they're reading it and really absorbing that and understanding. And so make sure that you are very clear with your expectations on that. And one of the last pieces that you're really gonna wanna have in there is your limitation of liability. That's not really something that I can help you with specifically because I'm not a legal professional, so you wanna cross-reference that with a legal professional. I can tell you that when I set up my contract, I used a template that I purchased online and cross-referenced it with a template that I purchased from LegalZoom. And so I was able to kind of combine those two things to build my client agreement. I really recommend doing something like that. It just put my mind at ease and it was one less thing that I had to worry about. And then of course, make sure that there is a signature area so you get everybody's signatures in writing and then you are good to go on the client agreement. The next important form to have is what I call a clutter attack plan. And this is actually something that you'll be able to submit to your client uh, before or during a session. And this is just 
the sort of outline of what it is that you're going to be working on with that client because you're going to get people coming to you that are very overwhelmed and they don't know where to start and they don't know what the process of working with you is going to look like. And so this is your opportunity to basically present them an outline of what it is that you're going to be doing. It's sort of like a step by step. And so you can lay out what their goals are for the space, how they want it to function. You can lay out the supplies that you're going to need, any sort of research or links that they might want to look into, if they're going to be buying product, if they're going to be investing in some organizing bins or some sort of system or something like that. You can provide the information to get those resources nailed down and basically uh, just kind of like sketch out perhaps like a little uh, space map, things like that. One little hack I'll give you is that I actually have a whole bunch of loose leaf graph paper and I will print out my clutter attack plan on one of those so that on the back side I'm able to whip that out with all of the details on one side and then turn it over and actually start sketching out with a pencil or a pen what, uh, like if we're designing a pantry or something, just kind of like sketch out where the shelves will be, where we might move things, how we're going to create our zones and all of that. So that's kind of just like your organizing plan, your clutter attack plan. You can come up with your own name for something like that. And that's a great one to give to your clients. The last essential form that you're gonna wanna have some form of is your template to request a review. And again, this is another one of those things that I like to have just a plug and play template of so that I'm not having to write it out from scratch for every single client. And this is a way for you to increase the likelihood that you're gonna get a great review and you're going to increase those five-star reviews on your Google or on your Thumbtack or however you are marketing your business on Facebook perhaps this is just a template that you can email to your client right away to be like hey I really enjoyed working with you so much and I'm so proud of all the progress that you've made you know just kind of like make it your voice however you want to say that and then provide a really easy link for them to click and leave you a review one thing that I always recommend to people to do is give your clients some sort of incentive for doing that for you. So one trick that you could try would be right before the last session, let's say your client books a four session package and they've completed three and you're getting ready to wrap up the last session with them. Before you go into that session, send them this email and give them like $5 off their last session or however you wanna do it. Give, the, give them some sort of incentive to want to fill that out. Maybe it's a discount on product that you get for them, or it could be some sort of small gift, like a little housewarming thing if you're helping them move in. Feel free to get as creative as you want to figure out whatever it is that you want to incentivize with that. And then you will be much more likely to get that positive five-star review. All right, so for those of you who are interested in seeing how to set up your free Canva account and how to customize some of these templates, you can do it right inside Canva, they have tons of template options, or you could use one of mine if you choose to do that. I'm gonna roll a clip that was previously recorded that's gonna take you through that whole process. It quite literally takes 30 seconds to set up a free Canva account, and then I'll show you exactly how to kind of move things around, do a little customization, maybe design part of your logo or whatever it is. I'm gonna show you how easy that is and why you should totally be using Canva to design these forms for your business. Let's go ahead Ahead and dive in and I'm going to choose a link here to take you through the process so let's say you want to customize your clutter attack plan we're gonna click that link and it's gonna open up a separate tab that says a template created by I speak organized was shared with you start designing now so you're just gonna hit the use template button and I wasn't kidding when I said it takes three seconds so you, if you've never set up an account before, you can sign up with Google, Facebook, email. If you have an account, you can log in here. No big deal. I'm going to use a dummy Google account because it's very easy. One, two, three. And we're inside. So your account is set up. This is the free version. Anything that has a little crown symbol next to it is only accessible via the Canva Pro plan. 
but all of the forms that I created, I made sure to make them pretty basic so that you have access to all of the elements within side of the form template itself. And I'll show you just a few things that you can do if you've never done this before. So obviously you can rename the file to whatever it is that you want. Let's say you want to play around with the font because you don't like this style font. So I'll just select it and go to the form, the font selector over here. Now you can see any of the options that don't have that crown symbol next to them are accessible to you. And there's quite a few. It just continues to go on and on and on forever and ever. And you can kind of try whatever you want. You can resize things, you can move stuff around. It will show you all of the formatting and grid lines so that you can line stuff up and make it look however you want. Maybe you have some custom brand colors that you want to include. And so you can start to build a brand kit by clicking this little area right here and start to save some of your own hex codes if you want to do that. But let's say that royal blue happens to be one of your brand colors. And so you can change that. Maybe you want to design your logo. You can start working on that in the elements area and maybe your logo is an apple. Don't know why, but maybe it is. And you can choose whatever doesn't have a pro symbol next to it. Here's a free one. And maybe you want that royal blue color and then you can add some text inside that. So you can come over here and hit the text field, add a heading, maybe you're the ABC. Organizing, co, I don't know. Resize it just like that. And then, you know, maybe you wanna put your logo in the corner. And let's pretend like you're super happy with that and that's your, that's your new logo. And then you can go ahead and select those pieces and say group. So that way, if you want to move your logo to a different part of the page, resize the whole thing, you can do it just like that. So those are just a few ways that you can customize. And then of course, any of the text inside of the client agreement template, you'll wanna go through and edit that and make sure that it reflects your company name and that you're adding all of the custom elements for your clients, this and that. And then when you're ready, you're satisfied with the look and the structure of your document. You go down to download. And then since this is a form to be filled out, you want to select either PDF standard or PDF print so that you can send it to them electronically via DocuSign. Maybe you want to use an application from uh, pdfescape.com, which is where you can create free fillable PDF so that you can send them a digital PDF to fill out directly online. Super easy, again, completely free. And I'll make sure to include a link to that at the bottom of the email as well, so that if you want to do that, you can. And then just choose PDF standard and hit download and you're good to go. And then you have your very own custom form that you can use and it's exactly the way you want it to be. All right, speaker fam, that is gonna wrap it up. Five essential forms that you need to get the ball rolling and start taking paying clients faster. I really, really hope that this video has been useful. If you got value out of it, please go ahead and smash the like button. Consider subscribing to this channel. I would be so honored to have you on board. I'm releasing new content on all these subjects every single week, and I'd love to have you along on the journey. So thank you so much for watching. Be sure sure to check the description area down below. If you want to check out the forms pack, the link is there. The discount code is there. If you want to snag your client intake form, that is there. My free gift to you. Again, make sure you go ahead and snag a copy of that as well. If you have any questions, pop them down into the comment section. I'd love to hear from you. I am always down there answering questions. And beyond that, I hope you all have a fabulous day and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.